a thousand feet in the air, looking down on a city of congested buildings and narrow roads, rent with railway viaducts and ships which load and unload at the very heart of the city's gates. Down there, a great population living under outmoded conditions which give rise to much confusion as well as discomfort. It is Glasgow, a city of contrast where beautiful districts alternate with congested and ill-planned areas. Poor housing conditions and obsolete roads which cause confusion, danger, and annoyance. Glasgow's early builders did not anticipate the quick and vast growth which has taken place. With the increased population, the introduction of motorized transport, and the expansion of industry and commerce, what they provided has proved totally inadequate for the needs of today. The conception of a redeveloped city was called for a completely new town planning scheme, one which would prescribe for improved living conditions, with more elbow room, greater convenience, with what folks need close by their homes, and amenity a primary consideration. The scheme to include a new and much needed road system, with safety the keynote. Glasgow's roads were not designed for motorized traffic. They were built for horse-drawn vehicles. It is not surprising that congestion of traffic of all kinds, such as this, should be a daily occurrence causing danger and wasting much time and energy. For six miles, the Clyde splits the city in two. The few bridges over it are grouped at the city centre within half a mile of each other. And long detours over these bridges or transportation on slow-moving ferries are necessary in order to cross the river. This involves a heavy loss of time and money and constitutes a burden on the city's economy. This problem will be partly solved by the construction of a tunnel under the Clyde to link Lindhouse on the south side with Whiteinch on the north. This tunnel is a basic element of the new road system, which will comprise 49 miles of motor roads in the form of inner and outer ring roads, together with several radial roads reserved for motor transport only. An added burden to the transportation problem is the fact that shipping is taken into Midtown. Goods are unloaded right onto the busy streets, causing much obstruction near the bridgehead. The new plan proposes that river traffic cease west of a new bridge at Carnoustie Street, which will form the cross river link in the proposed inner ring road. This inner ring will act as a great roundabout, eliminating crisscross traffic through the busy city centre. Housing problems in Glasgow are as serious as in other parts of the country. There are some beautiful residential areas in the Glasgow of today, but many districts are overcrowded, lacking in open spaces and ugly. Such scenes as this are typical of the unsatisfactory conditions of thousands of people in Glasgow today. This was taken within 10 minutes of the city centre. A father and mother and three kiddies living in one room, sleeping in one bed. Glasgow of tomorrow must see the elimination of all this. People and houses will be dispersed more evenly over a wider area. This means the redevelopment of obsolete, overcrowded, built-up areas and the development of unbuilt parts, so giving more breathing space. And with modern houses, like these, in healthy surroundings. 
There are, and always have been, housing schemes. Just what the name implies, collections of houses. Modern planning does more than just provide houses. It builds community areas with schools, cinemas, churches, shops, social and welfare amenities, all properly related to the homes of the people who will use them. Lack of school accommodation presents a great problem in the city. Many schools are too small, without adequate playgrounds and playing fields. Schools sited on main roads expose children to traffic dangers. Under the new plan, each child will attend a school within safe walking distance. Glasgow is well known as an important centre of heavy industry. Some of the finest engineering goods in the world are made in the city. But many of its factories are outmoded and congested, lacking in facilities for efficient production. With the development of over 200 acres within the city as industrial estates, Glasgow has already taken a major step forward in industrial development. But much more must be done in the building of modern, well-designed factories, welfare facilities, and recreational needs provided. The plan for Glasgow of tomorrow is taking shape. The overcrowded and overdeveloped city will give place to a new and free-flowing city, laid out in open manner, and providing ready accessibility, a fundamental requisite, particularly of a city centre. This is not just a plan on paper, it is one on which work has already started. The beginning of a new Glasgow, in which its people can live and work in comfort, with amenity a primary consideration. There is much more to be done yet, but the new plan is underway. These themes of part of the exhibition model indicate the vast plans which have been prepared to make Glasgow of today a new and better Glasgow of tomorrow.